Hello, and welcome to this National MS Education and Awareness Month teleconference hosted by MS Focus, the Multiple Sclerosis Foundation, and made possible with support from Mylan, Genentech, Bristol Myers Squibb, Biogen, EMD Serrano, Novartis, Sanofi Genzyme, and Janssen Neuroscience, a Johnson & Johnson company. I'm your host, Sarah Tedesco, social media coordinator, and I'm joined by Christopher Wells, who will be talking to us about staying active while at home. There are slides accompanying this presentation. To view the slides, please connect to the conference online. Go to join.freeconferencecall.com forward slash MS focus. Now, let me introduce our speaker. Chris undertakes the role of an exercise physiologist in the EULA C. Andrew C. Carlos MS Rehab and Wellness Program at the Shepherd Center in Atlanta, Georgia. Chris is a graduate of Alabama A&M University in Huntsville, Alabama, where he earned his degree in exercise science. Chris began his career in corporate employee health and wellness programming. Before transitioning to the Shepherd Center, to work with the MS population where he assists in research and determines wellness plans of care for the wellness program participants. Chris also enjoys traveling, exercise, and advocating healthy lifestyle modifications. During Chris's travel, he's had the privilege to travel to over 34 countries. Chris, thank you so much for being with us, and I will turn it over to you. Thank you. Um, thank you for having me, Sarah. And today, as she stated, we're going to talk about staying active while at home. Um, I know in this current state of crises, everything has been thrown out of whack. Um, so you're not used or having the same access to um, your wellness professionals that you had in the past. So in a sense, this is uncharted territory, and I completely understand. Um, so with that being the case, what we wanted to do was kind of give you some resources, some tips, um, and even some exercises and guidelines to go by while you're at home um, to where you can remain active, okay? Um, so without further ado, let's get started. So some things that we're going to talk about today is what is physical activity, um, some benefits to physical activity and exercise, some barriers that you may face, um, MS-related or not, um, your plan on how to stay active, and then we're going to develop a plan, a physical activity program for you to go by, okay? <clears throat> so what is physical activity? So generally speaking, um, I know physical activity and exercise can sometimes go hand in hand. Um, they're both beneficial. Um, but in this case, uh, physical activity um, is any unplanned movement and any bodily movement that burns and expends calories, okay? So generally speaking, um, physical activity does not um, require any type of structure <clears throat> or planning necessary. Um, simply put, um, physical activity is moving your arms, legs, standing from a chair, parking further away from the grocery store, um, and having to walk an extra distance. Um, but the main focus of physical activity is just to keep the body in motion, okay? One saying in the clinic that we always like to use is motion is lotion, right, for those joints especially. Um, and that's a true statement. Um, you'll probably notice on days where you're highly inactive and not moving that you may feel stiff that day or the next day. Um, so that just goes to show that just moving these muscles in your arms and your joints um, provides lotions up those joints and makes movement a little bit easier. Um, so some examples of physical activity could be walking around the house, um, going for a two-mile walk, things of that nature, okay? Um, so next, we want to talk about what is exercise. You're probably thinking, well, hey, you just told me. In a sense, yes, I did. <laughs> um, so exercise, unlike physical activity, is planned with the attention of sustaining and improving uh, health and fitness, okay? So with that being said, and long story short, what we're trying to improve are a few key factors. So we want to improve your flexibility, um, i.e. range of motion, okay? 
It was going to improve your endurance, strength, and balance, okay? Um, in the clinic, we've seen um, a lot of times flexibility and balance are, are two of the biggest things um, that I know a lot of us struggle with. I want to zero in on flexibility really quick here. Um, and so when I mean when I say flexibility, um, right now I'm simply talking about just, you know, stretches and different things of that nature. Um, but in regards to exercise, it's also a repetitive movement, meaning it is planned, unlike physical activity, which is not planned, okay? So with exercise, it is repetitive movements that are planned. Typically what you would see is you would do three sets of a certain exercise if you're talking about strength. Um, with endurance, flexibility, and balance, um, those parameters kind of vary a little bit, so you have some wiggle room there. Um, but some examples of engaging in intentional exercise um, includes strength and resistance training, so dumbbells, resistance bands, um, or jogging or swimming and things of that nature, okay? So those are planned activities and specific activities, unlike physical activity, Okay. So this is just a slide with just some examples of physical activity for you. Um, as you can see, you have a sit to stand and some guys doing bicep curls and things of that nature. So just to give you an idea of, of what it would be like, all right? Here's a big question. Why is it important to stay active while at home? Before I start talking about that, I want you to point your attention to this uh, cylindrical model in the right corner that I have here. So what you see is you have multiple sclerosis with the onset and then worsening. You have physical inactivity, physiological deconditioning, and then a worsening of MS symptoms, okay? And so what you see here is I talk about sedentary behavior and deconditioning, all right? And that's what this model in the corner is showing you. So physical inactivity, so not moving, not doing any exercise, can lead to deconditioning. So you're probably thinking, well, what is deconditioning? So it's a cause to lose muscle tone, uh, fitness, cardiovascular, um, especially through a lack of exercise. So you can see they go hand in hand, okay? When you hear someone um, say deconditioning, a lot of times what happens is with physical inactivity, if you haven't exercised or if you haven't moved for an extended period of time, when it, go when it comes time for you to exercise, you'll find that exercise is really difficult for you to get through, all right? It can be really fatiguing can be really taxing on your body, and that's not what we want to do. But that's kind of the initial stage of physical inactivity. So as you can see with this cycle here, it's one big circle. Physical inactivity, deconditioning, onset worsening of symptoms, all right? We want to break that chain, okay, by just moving, all right? And so sedentary behavior, I'm pretty sure you guys have heard um, what sedentary behavior is, and that is also um, a lack of exercise or, i.e., physical inactivity, Okay, so what that means is while you're at home and now with this COVID-19 crisis, you're like, well, I don't know what to do, so I'm just going to sit here, which is what happens. Not to say that it's currently happening, it's happening for everyone, but it does happen. And so that sedentary behavior then becomes periods of physical inactivity because now you've created a routine for yourself to basically not move. Because we say, well, I'm not sure what to do. We keep telling ourselves, well, I'm not sure what to do, and that's fair. Um, but it also refers to any low level of energy expenditure less than 1.5 METs. All right, METs means metabolic equivalence. Um, what that means is like energy expenditure, as I said, for like sitting, reclining, or lying. Usually, what you're doing when you're watching TV or something to that to, the, to that extent. All right. And so with that, as you see, some two things down here happens. Increase in fatigue from a lack of exercise or physical activity and sedentary behavior and a loss of flexibility. Two things that we don't want to happen, okay? So what we're going to do in these uh, forthcoming slides is discuss ways how we can combat this sedentary behavior and the onset of deconditioning, okay? So sedentary behavior versus moderate physical activity. Hmm. Let's see. So with this heat and signature model, I want to point out a couple things here, okay? Um, I want you to look in the top left corner here, okay? The top left corner is someone who has been sedentary for a, an unspecified amount of time. What that red area dictates is all-cause mortality, okay? 
meaning you put yourself at risk for metabolic diseases, an onset of worsening MS symptoms, and a myriad of other things that we that are absolutely avoidable, okay? And so you see this arrow down here at the bottom, you see how it's less red. Just by doing some, like decreasing your daily sitting time can reduce, like reducing your sedentary activity improves some all-cause mortality. Not, that's not what we want, but it does improve it, okay? So just notice that person who's not, who's not exercising, who's inactive, and just sitting their entire day puts themselves at risk. And I'm not even talking specifically just MS. I'm talking tons of other things, okay? That's why this is also a, and a lifestyle change, right? Um, and it's so important for you to just move, just get up and walk, okay, or um, anything that you can do if it's applicable, okay? So I want you to pay attention to this next arrow here, all right? And it's kind of halfway um, to where you see this person in the right corner that's in the green that's walking, okay? The goal is to achieve at least 30 minutes a day of moderate physical activity. Just by moving that bar 30 minutes, we can decrease the incidence of all-cause mortality, okay? So that goes to show how important it is to decrease your daily sitting time or daily physical inactivity, decrease deconditioning, uh, you, you avoid that loss of flexibility, you avoid that increase in fatigue, okay, um, just by moving 30 minutes a day. And as we get further along in this presentation, even towards the end, I am going to give you the tools to be active in your house with specific exercises and the recommendations for those exercises as well. But that's to come in a little bit. A few things here. Why is it important to be active every day? Okay, it doesn't mean you have to exercise every day, but we want you to absolutely be active every day. Um, all of these are important, but in particular, I put some arrows next to it. Increases your energy levels, boosts your immune system, which is absolutely critical around this time now, and reduces fatigue, which actually is one of the biggest um, MS symptoms that we see. Um, and just by engaging in at least 30 minutes a day of some moderate physical activity um, can improve all of these levels, okay? And now it may not be to an extreme extent, um, but it does get the ball rolling for sure. Uh, what are some barriers to physical activity? These are what you see here uh, are a lot of symptoms that um, other people have described are huge barriers when it comes to not just physical activity, but your just acti activities of daily living, right? Um, so the biggest ones that I marked were numbness and tingling, fatigue and pain. And the reason I chose these three versus all of the other symptoms, which are equally important, um, are because these three will probably most likely be your biggest barriers from what we heard to engaging in exercise and physical activity. You're too tired, pain is too severe, and numbness and tingling. Oftentimes, you don't have any sensation on a certain side of your body or on a certain uh, limb, which makes exercise even harder because you're unsure of how you're doing the exercise. So that's really the reason I zeroed in on these three. Um, but I want to talk about some other barriers outside of your MS symptoms that may prevent you from engaging in physical activity and exercise, okay? And I actually want you guys to keep this, these next two slides in mind because even at the end, when we open it up for questions, you may have something that we don't have on here that is a barrier for you, and I would love to hear that. Keep this question in the back of your mind. What are some barriers at home that keep you, that keep you from engaging in physical activity? And I want to talk outside of your MS symptoms if you're experiencing MS symptoms. If not, then that doesn't apply to you. But I want you to look at this. So we have motivation, time management, access to services, and inconvenience of exercise, all equally important, okay? And then we'll go through and discuss each one of these. So let's talk about motivation first. Um, I know oftentimes when you've been taken out of your daily routine, and you have a set schedule every day of what you're doing every specific hour of the day, um, that doesn't, that's not happening right now. So in a sense, you may lose that motivation, right? So what we want to do is we want to, we want to get you motivated again. So one way that we can do that, and you see down in the bottom corner here, is establishing some SMART goals, okay? Um, for those of you that are unfamiliar with SMART, SMART goals, I'm going to go over um, each one. Talk about the do's and don'ts, and I know you can see them. 
And then on the left-hand side, I put in an example of how I want you guys to do this. If you have pen and paper next to you, I actually want you to write down some SMART goals. You don't have to share them, but after we talk about each branch of the SMART goal, um, I want you to think about some things that are relatable to you um, that you can write down, and I want you to use them, okay? So let's start with the first one. When you're setting your SMART goals, you want to be specific, okay? So you see the do's and don'ts here. Do, you set real numbers with real deadlines, okay? Don't be generic, such as, I want more visitors, okay? No one knows what that means. That's not specific, okay? Uh, measurable. Is there a way for you to track this goal, okay? Um, don't hide behind buzzwords like brand and engagement or social influence, okay? Um, attainable. I think that's a really important one. Um, does this work towards your goal, and is, is it challenging but possible? Um, don't try to take over the world in one night. I think that's really important. Um, especially when talking about exercise. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this, but exercise is incremental, okay? You do not have to complete your entire exercise session in one sitting. And even if you do or don't, if you don't, um, you should not feel bad about that, okay? Because exercise is incremental. We don't need you to take off, bite off a big chunk or more than you can handle um, all at once and then increase your fatigue, right, for the next day, okay? We don't need that. So you want to make sure that the goal that you set for yourself is a challenge, right, but attainable. So then we go to realistic. So be honest with yourself. If you say you're going to exercise for four days a week, do you really think you're going to exercise for four days a week? All right? So be realistic, okay? And, and don't, you know, there may be some hurdles. You know your body better than anyone, okay? So you know what you're capable of doing, which is why I said I want you in particular. I don't want anyone else to help you. I want you to write down some SMART goals that you have for yourself. And then time-bound is the last one. So give yourself a deadline. Hey, I'm going to do uh, – I'm going to exercise for four weeks. That's your deadline. And try to stick to it. Again, remember, if you don't stick to your deadline, do not be hard on yourself. Do not get down on yourself. It is okay. Remember, I know MS can be day-to-day. Okay, so it does. You, you do not have to bite all, all bite, do complete all this all in one day, but just give yourself some type of goal so you know that you're working towards something. Okay, so now we're gonna look over to the left hand side, and I wrote down a few examples for you. So let's start with specific. <clears throat> Specifically, I will complete the cardio and strength program designated to me. Okay, that can be given to you by your PTOT, your wellness professional, your PCP, whoever, whoever designated to you, that's what your specific goal is. I will complete cardio and strength program designated to me. Now, is this measurable? Well, let's see. I will complete twice a week for 30 minutes. See that I highlighted total activity because, like I said, it can be broken up into 15-minute increments. All right? So that's how you'll measure it. You can have any type of paper or whatever you want to keep track of making sure you're doing twice a week, but that's your measurable twice a week. 30 minutes, total, acti- total uh, activity. Is this attainable? As I said, excuse me, you know your body and your limitations better than anyone. So when setting your goals, just be, a- be sure that you're able to complete them, okay? Um, is this relevant and realistic? Yes. The goal is to increase physical activity and exercise. So this is absolutely realistic. Is your goal time-based? I will engage in exercise twice a week for 30 minutes. See that highlight there? For four weeks. Now, I know you hear me mention four weeks over and over. Four weeks is not set in stone, okay? You are more than welcome to choose your time. But I'm just using four weeks today as an example. And, again, as I said, keep in mind that your time-based goals may vary depending on your day-to-day. So I think this is a big one, time management. How do I manage my time when I have so much time, (laughs) right? Um, so a big one here is you have to, you have to, you have to prioritize physical activity and exercise. So just some things that you can use. I put a little picture over here in the workout log, right? Nice and, and colorful. Um, you'll definitely see it. You can't miss it, right? But create some calendars, create some sticky notes or some reminder alerts on your phone. Schedule your physical physical activity, yes, and I mean schedule it while you're at home. I know you don't have to leave, but make a schedule for yourself, just like you would if you were going to see your exercise physiologist or your PT or OT or even a a doctor's visit, whatever. Schedule it the same way. An alert comes in your phone, you're like, oh, it's time for me to exercise. 
Make sure that your alerts are visible, okay? That doesn't mean write down a sticky note and stick it in your drawer, <laughs> okay? That won't help us, all right? <clears throat> so have an alert on your phone. Put it on your refrigerator. If you have a visible calendar, you can put it on your calendar. Wherever you can put it, just make sure that you know it's a place that you frequent all the time in your house um, and that you will see it, okay? And exercise is intermittent, okay? And, again, this kind of goes with what I said last slide is you can break it up into how you want. Uh, it doesn't have to be 15-minute inc uh, increments. It can be five-minute increments, but it's intermittent. So that means you could be doing it throughout the day, okay? But it's important <clears throat> that you plan this uh, physical activity and exercise as you would any other appointment, okay? So access to services. So, as I said earlier, due to these times of uncertainty with COVID-19, um, social distancing, it's made it really difficult for you guys to access uh, services or if you've had <clears throat> uh, people coming to your house, your therapy coming to your house or your exercise specialist uh, coming to your house, a personal trainer, whoever, to do these exercises, those are no longer there. So what would benefit you is finding tools to navigate your health and wellness. Um, some of those things are contacting your designated wellness professional for exercise options. So if that means you, if you have an uh, exercise physiologist or a personal trainer or someone at your fingertips that you can contact, give them a call um, and then let them talk you through some exercises. Maybe they can do some video exercises for you. Um, if you've been with us at Shepherd in the clinic, what we've decided to do is create some home exercise programs um, designed by your PT, OT, or myself. Um, that you have access to as well. Um, I think another big one now that's really starting to blow up is telehealth. Um, I know there's currently some research going on, even at Shepherd, is the benefits of telehealth versus coming into the clinic. <clears throat> but in this case, with this COVID-19 crisis, telehealth has become even more important. So, again, this kind of goes back to the first point. If you have um, a wellness professional or someone um, at your disposal, See if you can get their contact, do some video conferencing, doing some uh, health and exercise and things of that nature. But you want to be creative. You have to be creative in these times. Um, it's kind of the only choice we have, right? Inconvenience of exercise. Exercise is an inconvenience. I know some people don't think it's fun. And it's like, oh, my gosh, exercise. I get it. Trust me, I get it. So we want to eliminate the inconvenience of exercise by practicing the five Ps, plan, prioritize, I've mentioned that a zillion times now, <laughs> pace, position, and prepare, okay? So <clears throat> when you're planning your exercise, you determine when, where, and how, okay? How are you going to do it? Where in my house am I going to designate a place? And when am I going to do it? That's that time management, okay? Track it and be sure to account for your good days and bad days and have a plan for those days because good days and bad days happen. It's okay. Um, but we just plan for them. And, again, when you have those bad days, remember, do not be down on yourself. Got it? Prioritize, prioritize, prioritize. Realize that you have to make other adjustments in your life to account for the energy that's needed to, exchange, to engage in exercise, meaning how about you take some of that energy away from watching TV and say, you know what? I'm going to put this towards exercise, okay? Make sure you're communicating with your spouse, kids, friends, whoever, to ensure that that support system is there. Because oftentimes, you know what, you may be like, you may wake up and say, you know what, I'm not feeling this today. I don't want to do this today, and that's okay. But that's where the spouse, friends, kids come in, and they come in and they motivate you to get up and exercise. And once you start and you start to feel good, that's all the, that's all the motivation you need. All right? And so this is a big one. This next one's a big one. So let's pay close attention to this one. Pace yourself. All right? As we know, MS varies day to day. All right? Pace yourself with your exercise. Do not overdo it. Um, what you want to do, and we'll get to this in a second, is use the RPE, which is a rating of perceived exertion as a measure of how hard you should be working. And remember that exercise can be broken up into two sessions. I probably said that like 10 times now. You're probably thinking like, man, I get it. Um, but <laughs> – with the RPE scale, typically, and I said we'll get to that in a second, you want to go, the RPE scale goes from 1 to 10, okay, 1 being I feel nothing, which means you're probably sitting there, 10 meaning I can't breathe, catch my breath, nor talk. Uh, we don't want to be there. 
What we want to do um, is typically have you in that four to six range, okay? Um, and then, like I said, we'll get into that, so I won't go into too much detail there. Um, but position. Be aware of how you feel and how you're able to perform exercise, whether that's sitting, standing, on the floor, wherever the case may be. Um, but just be aware. Um, bring awareness to your body on how you're feeling that day. Like, hey, maybe, maybe I can do some exercises standing today, and maybe I can't. Um, so just keep that in mind, okay? And then prepare. I think it's one of the most important. Prep a dedicated space in your home or apartment, et cetera, wherever you're able to exercise. If that means, excuse me, moving, uh, moving things around the house to, to where you have a dedicated space, then that's what it's going to take. But if you have a dedicated space to exercise, that will also motivate you to continue to exercise as well. <clears throat> so now we want to plan to stay active. Now, planning to stay active requires a few things here. We need to make sure that we're including flexibility, cardiovascular activity, balance, strength, and a really important one is incorporating rest days, okay? So generally, generally speaking, we'll get to this in a second, um, you at least want two, at least two rest days throughout the week um, just to kind of recuperate um, from the exercises that you've done. Because, I mean, exercise is pretty taxing. It's beneficial, but it can be pretty taxing, right? Um, especially now we're kind of getting into some hot months, um, so that can, that can have an effect as well, especially if you decide to go outside um, within your confines, like your backyard or your front yard, to do some exercise. You know, that, that heat is another, another factor that plays an important part on that fatigue factor. So definitely incorporate some rest days so that when you do have your exercise days, um, that you can reap the full benefit from those days, okay? So... When planning to do this balance, resistance training, cardiovascular activity, and flexibility, um, we have a FIT principle that we use to guide how we set our parameters, all right? Parameters meaning how often, how many sets, how many reps, okay? So frequency, how often should you exercise? Intensity, how hard should you exercise? Time, how long should you exercise? And then type in specific, uh, specific what type of exercise is most uh, appropriate for you. And that varies from person to person, but this could also be where you reach out to your wellness professional or your trainer or whoever you have and say, hey, I know I need to exercise, but what exercises do you think are most important for me? Um, towards the end of this uh, presentation, I have some exercises listed where in general um, you would find yourself doing, uh, training larger muscle groups and things of that sort, and functional movements, um, but we'll get to that in a second. When we're talking about flexibility, um, some benefits of flexibility, it's a component of spasticity management. If you're having any type of spasticity or really stiff muscles, it helps with elongating the muscles so we can get a good uh, range of motion, especially when stretching or performing exercises, making sure we're not feeling too stiff. Now, the frequency on this is daily. You should be stretching absolutely daily, um, doing two to three reps depending on the movement, and you should be holding it for a max of 60 seconds, a minimum of 30 seconds. If that's not achievable, 30 or 60 or somewhere in between, that's okay. You'll work up to that, okay, because I know a lot of times stretching can be painful at times, okay? So you definitely want to ease into it. All right, so the frequency, because of pain, as we talked about earlier, may not be a daily thing, but the goal could be daily, okay? And then working up to 30 and 60 seconds. Um, you can stretch individually or with a partner or spouse, whoever, or with equipment. Um, you know, you have yoga straps or towels, anything that um, provides some type of stability when stretching, okay? And I have a couple stretches over here on the side that you guys can see, Um that you can do, okay? Now, this is the RPE scale um, that I was telling you guys about. So cardiovascular activity, what does it do? It improves endurance, improves lung capacity, okay? This really, um, when we talk about deconditioning earlier, cardiovascular cardio activity is really impacted the most. Um, a, lot, a lot of times with the deconditioning and the sedentary activity, when you start doing things that get your heart rate up, it kind of makes it hard to continue on, like especially when we're talking about endurance and things like that. Um, so you definitely want to work your way into it. Um, if you have been sedentary, 
um, for a while if you start doing cardio activity, ease into it, okay? And again, these are guidelines. You don't have to live and die by these guidelines. These are parameters set for you. These are goals. You can think of them as goals, like, hey, I'm not doing 30 minutes. I can't, I can't, I can't hang on that long. That's okay. Just know that 30 minutes is your ultimate goal. Do 10 minutes. Do five minutes. Do what you can. Or, like I said, break it up. Okay, so I want you to take a look really quickly over here to this RP scale. As I was telling you, we like to have you between four and six. So four is considered moderate on this scale, um, and that's when you talking first becomes broken. If you're having a conversation with someone, you notice, like, hey, it's getting harder and harder for me to talk. All right, five somewhat hard, so that's when that heavier breathing starts to kick in. And then six, talking is avoided because you can't catch your breath and carry on a conversation at the same time. Okay, now six is not somewhere you want to remain your entire cardio session. It's just a point that you want to reach. Okay, I would say remain in that four and five range. If you're just beginning, I would stay in that four range. Okay. Once you get more into it, get more advanced, you can hang out in that five and six range if it's sustainable for you, though, okay? So let's look at the frequency. Um, the frequency would be twice a week, all right? Intensity, an RPE, or rating of perceived exertion, between four and six, ideally. Um, again, uh, that may not be the case for everyone, okay? But, again, it's, it's a goal, it's a parameter we set. Time, 20 to 30 minutes or two 15-minute sessions, all right, or five-minute sessions, okay? And some types, uh, walking, biking, boxing, dancing, and aerobics class, DVDs, like aerobics DVDs or boxing DVDs, um, or dancing, Zumba DVDs, okay? You have all those at your disposal, all right? And these are just some options here. Um, and when I say walking, you're like, well, I thought we're supposed to practice social distance. Yes, please practice social distance. But you can walk around your house. Okay, you can walk the stairs if you have stairs. You can walk in your backyard or in the confinements of your own living quarters, okay? So definitely that is an option. So balance, this is a big one, okay? So balance is an integration of your motor and sensory systems. A lot of times uh, the biggest things that we see are uh, your eyes, these are part of your balance system. Your sensory system is your eyes, your inner ear, touch and pressure from the limbs and joints, uh, somatosensory. So what that is, a lot of times your body is able to tell or you get these, these, these sensory neurons that go to the brain when your surface changes or when you're doing multiple exercises because you probably tell yourself like, hey, when my eyes are open, my balance is pretty good, but why does that change when I close my eyes? Well, it's part of your sensory system, and your body's trying to figure out where its position is in space, all right? But it helps for you to train your balance system to be able to form those uh, essential exercises, actually, all right? And when we talk about balance, we talk about some frequency. Um, although balance varies from person to person, all right, some research has shown that balance should be incorporated daily. Now, you do not have to complete balance daily, um, especially if you're not comfortable uh, doing any type of, of balance exercises. Um, but there are so many that you can perform. But if you don't feel comfortable um, doing balance exercises, you can have someone um, there to assist you, kind of guide you um, to make sure everything goes well. The intensity is varied just based on tolerability. Um, and then there are ways to challenge the different systems, um, your sensory eyes open or eyes closed, um, or your motor, which is like coordination um, and things like that, versus using like standing on a foam pad or standing on the ground, okay, things like that. Um, and that goes to type. So uneven and even surfaces, head turns, eyes closed, feet close together, and things like that. And so this next slide actually gives you a few balance options that you can do. So you have like a tandem stance with eyes closed, which is very advanced. Um, you have shifting left to right, kind of weight shifting forward and back, some walking with head turns, and then just standing with your feet close together and turning your head side to side. So resistance training. Um, the frequency of resistance training, we are saying twice a week, one to three sets, 18 to 15 repetitions. Um, again, this is also 20 to 30 minute sessions or multiple smaller sessions. Um, I know fatigue and pain, as we said earlier, can impact this. Um, but if fatigue becomes an issue, 
um, please, please take a break um, and then limit the exercise. If it's the exercise um, that's causing the problem, then go move on to your next exercise, okay? It's completely fine. Um, but as I said earlier, we want to put emphasis on doing functional movements like sit to stands. We do that daily using large muscle groups, um, resistance bands, wrist weights, body weight, or dumbbells, whatever you have access to, okay? And just some options here. As you can see with the resistance band, doing some bicep curls, seated, doing some lateral raises, standing, using a chair for support, um, doing some hamstring curls, or just pushing yourself up out the chair, working those tricep muscles and things like that. So now we want to talk about designing your home exercise program. So uh, when we do resistance training, let's make sure we're doing it twice a week as said. Flexibility, it'll be daily with or without assistance. Our cardiovascular, twice a week, it'll be HIIT training. What's the high, so HIIT training is high-intensity interval training. Um, what that means is you would do a specific exercise for, let's say, 30 seconds on, and then you would take a brief sec couple seconds off, okay? Mainly with HIIT training, the goal is to keep the heart rate kind of high, all right? But, again, there's various types, and you can, you can shift that how you want. 30 seconds may not be something that you can sustain, and, again, that's okay. Um, but we'll, we have some wiggle room with that. Balance doesn't have to be done daily, but if you feel comfortable and you're able to apply it daily uh, with some support if you need to, then absolutely. Um, and, again, while we know physical activity and exercise is very important, it's equally important to maximize your rest days, okay, as I said earlier, to reap the benefits of your exercise days and get a good full recovery, all right? Um, and, again, I've said this 100 times now, exercise can be incremental. I can't say it enough. So what we have here is your exercise program that you can do at home. Um, I believe you guys will have access to this once this is over, um, so you'll be able to complete some of these. But as you can see, we'll go line by line really quickly. Um, so for cardio, you have boxing, seated, seated marches, seated jumping jacks, and seated wood chops, okay? And, again, with these cardio, these can all be timed. As I said, you just look back through, look through your fit principle that I gave you and apply those parameters if – you can sustain them. Remember, okay, it doesn't have doesn't have to be that. It can be it can be changed up a little bit to fit what works for you. All right. With resistance training here, we have bicep curls, seated lateral raise, um, scapular retraction, which is great for posture. Um, sit to stand with chair squat and leg extensions, which can be done um, with uh, ankle weights. All right. Flexibility. Shoulder circles, hamstring stretch, trunk rotations, knee to chest, and a lower back stretch. Um, out of all of these, what I see oftentimes in the clinic is really tight hamstrings. But even besides that, again, stretching daily, all right? So that is all the time that we have for now. If you missed any part of this teleconference, it will be replayed on msfocusradio.org, and it will also be available on demand. Follow MS Focus on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for times and access information. Our sincere thanks to our sponsors for their support of the National MS Education and Awareness Month and to all of our callers for your participation, and especially to Chris. Thank you so much for your time that you spent to prepare this and share the information with all of our callers.